today's video is going to be more with area, but today we're going to take it one step further. Instead of be given me giving you all of the information that you need, there's going to be some information that we're going to have to find along the way. So when we look at number one, we see that we have a trapezoid, and we see that the sides, the legs of our trapezoid, are both 17, making this an isosceles trapezoid. So we have identified our shape. As soon as we identify our shape, we think about our formula. The area formula for a trapezoid is one half times the height times base one plus base two. So we start off by looking at our diagram. We look at what information we have and what we need. When I look at this equation, the first variable that I'm looking for is h, which is going to be the height of the trapezoid. And in case you forgot, the height of the trapezoid is always going to be perpendicular to the base. So in this case, I don't have the height. I need to find the height of our trapezoid. To do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the altitude on both sides. And we see from here to here is 10, which means from here to here is also going to be 10. Now the entire base of the bottom is that 26. This is accounting for 10 of the 26. So we do 26 minus 10, that's gonna leave us with 16. Because this is an isosceles trapezoid, this piece right here is dividing the bottom equally. So that 16 that I have remaining, I'm gonna cut that into two equal pieces, which is gonna make this eight and this eight. From here, it doesn't matter which side you look at, because they're going to be identical. But I'm looking at this triangle right here, and because this is an altitude, it's a right triangle, we're missing the height. But because it's a right triangle, we can use our Pythagorean theorem. So we have leg squared plus leg squared is equal to hypotenuse squared. Eight squared is going to give us that 64. 17 squared is going to give us 289. We move the 64 over. We get the height squared is equal going to, going to be equal to 225 square root. And we now know that the height of our trapezoid is going to be equal to 15. So something that we need that wasn't directly provided to us. So we have 1 half times the height, which we now know is 15. We are looking at the bases. Remember, the, in a trapezoid, the bases are the two sides that are parallel to each other. So we have a base of 10 and we have a base of 26. And it doesn't matter which one you say is base one and which one you say is base two. They're the same, it doesn't matter, we're gonna be adding them together. So we've got 10 plus 26. I'll go ahead and simplify this, one half times 15 times 36 because 10 plus 26 is gonna give us 36. You can go ahead and just put this entire thing in your calculator and you end up with 270. So the area of this trapezoid is 270. I didn't give you units as centimeters or inches or meters, but we do need to label it. So this is just gonna be units squared, whatever that unit happens to be. All right. Moving on to number two. When I look at number two, I see that all four sides are congruent. So when the perimeter is 148, I'm gonna take that perimeter and I'm gonna divide it into four equal pieces, which is gonna give us 37, which means each side is gonna be 37 meters. Now with those four sides congruent, this is going to be a rhombus. And that's pretty important because we have to think back all the way to units on quadrilaterals. And our rhombus has a lot of different properties that are gonna be useful here. Because it's a rhombus, 
your diagonals are perpendicular to each other. And we know that perpendicular is going to be really, really important because when we have those right angles, it allows us to use the Pythagorean theorem. Now, not only are the diagonals perpendicular, but the diagonals are being bisected. So this piece right here is congruent to this piece. This piece is congruent to this piece. So I'm given that this is 12, which means that this is going to be 12 as well. All right, so we have everything that we know so far. Let's think about what we need. So we have the area of a rhombus, and your rhombus is the same as a kite, which is 1 half times diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. Your diagonals are those pieces going through your shape. So I do know one of them already. We were given this 12, and because it was a rhombus, we knew that those two pieces were congruent. So we know that one of our diagonals is going to be 24 meters. The problem is we need to find this other diagonal here. So that's going to be our unknown. Let's have that be x, that would be x, and it doesn't matter which one you look for, but we're going to concentrate on this one triangle. And as we discussed, the whole purpose of that right angle is so that we can get a right triangle so we can use Pythagorean theorem. So that's going to become leg squared, which is our unknown over here, plus leg squared is equal to hypotenuse squared. So we've got x squared plus 144 equals 1,369. We move that 144 over giving us x squared is equal to 12, 25, square root each side, and we find that x is going to be equal to 35. So that means that this segment right here is going to be 35, and as we said, that this piece right here is congruent to this piece. So if that's 35, that's 35, which is going to make our second diagonal 70 meters, 35 plus 35. So we can fill that information in now. We have the first diagonal, which is going to be 24. And then we just found our second diagonal, which is 70. And it doesn't matter if you put the 24 first or the 70 first, because we're multiplying. We do 1 half times 70 times 24. And we end up with our area is equal to 840 meters squared. Don't forget to get a label on your answer. And that is it for our video today.